Hey, the purpose of this recording is to illustrate how to do <clears throat> an al analyze factorial design experiment in Minitab. So this setup assumes that you've already entered your data. In this case, we have columns C6 through C9, which is where your data is. This was created with factorial design of experiments. This is very important. You must have created your factorial design of experiments in Minitab for this process to work. Also, you have a column of data which you have imported into uh, Minitab from ExtendSim. So you've copied that in and then typed in the name of your uh, response variable, which in this case is end time. So now that you have your columns populated, you're going to go to stat, DOE, factorial, and notice that analyze factorial design is available. So analyzing a factorial design, uh, if we have more than one response variable, we can only analyze with respect to one response variable at a time. So end time select. Now, most of the things that you see in here, we can just use the default options. Uh, we do, however, have to set up which terms we wanna use. There is a default option for those terms um, as well. Now, if we wanna use terms, we can use those up to a certain number of order in the model. So this will give us like only the order three factors. Most of the time, anything beyond factor three or tends not to be significant anyhow. We can also choose factors individually. So if you thought that a specific thing was significant, you could push that over into your selected terms, or you can remove terms that you feel you don't want to look at. So we're just going to analyze through factor three and then click OK. Okay, now the, again, the rest of these things we can leave um, as is and just use the default options. Okay, now Minitab does its thing. Notice the first thing we see is this box that says the following terms were totally confounded. Okay, so what that means is that these terms are um, fully correlated with other terms and therefore they're giving you the exact same information. So therefore they've been removed from the model. And uh, that's all you really need to know about that. You don't, we don't need to do, uh, we're not going to the level of statistics where we're gonna do any further analysis in that regard. Okay, the next thing you're gonna see here is coded coefficients. So coded coefficients, if you remember from the reading in law, coded coefficients deal with whether you're translating the values that you use in the factorial design into negative one to one, the reason for using coded coefficients uh, in your regression equation is, and the analysis as was explained in law is if we have several inputs that are radically different scales, we don't want that to impact the analysis due to the scaling. So that's why we scale everything from negative one to one because it removes those kinds of scaling effects. Okay, model summary. Uh, what we're most interested in is R squared. So R squared is 70%. So that's actually pretty good for this type of model. Um, in, in these types of models, usually R squared is not that high. So remember, R squared is simply a way of understanding whether or not a linear regression is actually a good fit for this data. You can do linear regression on anything, absolutely any set of data. That doesn't mean it was a good idea. So having a relatively high R squared gives you confidence that this linear regression is actually an appropriate model. Okay, moving down to the analysis of variance table. So what we're, remember this is an ANOVA, but it's not an ANOVA on the results. It's actually analysis of variance on the coefficients. So that's the coefficients in the linear regression. 
So what we're really looking for in this table is the p-values. Remember the p-values, uh, going back to the stats, if the p is low, the null must go. So each of these p-values tells you what is the likelihood that this coefficient could reasonably be zero. If we see a low value, we're rejecting that null hypothesis. So anything that we see as low tells us that that's, that coefficient in the linear regression model is uh, actually likely to not be zero. So we think it's significant. So if we look at the number of zombies, for instance, that tells us that the number of zombies in the model is likely to be statistically significant. Ditto for everything till we get down to here. So zombie speed times probability of kill, that's one of our two-way interactions that's left in the model. And you notice that that's very high. Again, low and high are relative to the chosen alpha that we had in the model, which defaults to 0.05, which tells us that the Z times PK speed term in the model is not statistically significant. So continuing down here, we get the actual regression equation. So if we were to build a predictive model based on these factors, like what would the end time be based on values for these factors, this is the regression equation that we would use in uncoded units. Um, we can look to see if we have a lot of unus unusual observations or large residuals. Um, if we have very large residuals, that tells us that um, the linear regression model, it violates uh, assumptions potentially if we have a very large uh, number of outliers or very large residuals. Next thing we're gonna look at is a normal plot of standardized effects. So that's normal plot of standardized effects is tells us the same information as this Pareto chart, which is which of these factors is significant. This gives us the same information as looking at the p-values on that ANOVA table, except it gives it to you in graphical form. So we can see here that all of the factors in this study that we're including are NUMZ, G-speed, G-health, et cetera, everything except factor BE, that is factor B times E, zombie speed times PK, all of the rest of the factors are significant, with factor B being the zombie speed is the most significant factor followed by uh, A and C, which are close together. So everything to the right of this line is significant. All the factors to the left of the line are considered to be not significant. A, the normal probability plot. So this is a probability plot of the residuals. The nor, this tells us whether or not the assumption for the linear regression that the residuals follow a normal curve is in fact true. And there's um, <clears throat> this gives us the indication of <coughs> the skewness of the plot and uh, whether or not overall it's a good fit. So what we would like to see if it was a perfectly normal is a hugging along this line. We see some stuff here on these tail ends. So that's telling us we don't have a completely perfectly normal distribution, um, which this is okay as far as the type of analysis we're doing. Uh, the other thing to make keep in mind about the type of analysis that we're doing is Factorial, um, analyzing the factorial design with the linear regression is the only thing that we have in our toolkit. So if you see something that's badly off normal with these normal probability plots, that's, that tells you that the violations are potentially, um, or that the assumptions behind doing the analysis is potentially violated. And that tells you that maybe this isn't the best analysis method and that you might conclude that you know uh, further analysis would need to be done in terms of statistics to do something a little bit better than this because we're not following all the assumptions of the 
analysis method. Okay, residuals versus time, we should see evenly distributed. Um, we won't want to see clumping and lumping should be evenly distributed above and below the line, which this is a little meh, maybe not perfect, but uh, again, um, it doesn't look like we're violating it terribly. So we're just going to take a note that it's not perfectly evenly distributed above and below the lines. And that is the information that you're expecting to get from analyzing the factorial design. <clears throat> the linear regression equation is something that you may use when you go and try to do some um, predictive calculations, because essentially this is this linear regression equation is the meta model, the linear meta model. <clears throat> 